What is up, everybody? Welcome to Cinema Trip Reviews. I am Wyatt. Once again, joined by Alex. This is the first episode of our Halloween Spooktacular to kick everything off of our month-long, you know, horror reviews and everything. We're going to have some new movies mixed in, among some other classics as well. Today, we are talking about Dawn of the Dead from 2004, celebrating the 20th anniversary, which is crazy. Because I remember when this movie like came out and everything, and how like how popular it was. And not only did this kind of come out during the boom of the zombie age, because during man, there was 2000s, there was just everything zombies. I mean, everything. You know, everywhere this might um, started, to be honest it, with you. Like, it was around that time because um, yeah. i do know that there was the house of the dead i think it was something like that uh but that was a failure and the universal was kind of weird about putting a ton of money into this so they actually ended up cutting a lot of costs for this movie and then it actually ended up doing really well because it was pretty well made it was yeah. a pretty decent flick um but this also kick-started the career of zach snyder who a lot of people fucking hate Zack Snyder nowadays after the whole DCE, DCEU debacle and everything. But I like Zack Snyder. I mean, there was like a whole Zack mess Snyder. with DC and those movies and whatnot, but I actually like a good amount of his movies. Uh, this was his directorial debut. Before that, he did a bunch of like music videos and whatnot previously, and then he ended up doing a, a remake of Dawn of the Dead. Uh, the original came out in 1978, and apparently George Romero actually was impressed. He had his reservations about this movie as it was being made, as I feel like a lot of directors would with something being of theirs being remade. But he was actually impressed with what they kind of changed and did differently with this. Um, now, I didn't get the chance to go back and rewatch the original to kind of do like a comparison type thing. So I'm probably not going to be talking about the, the original too much. When was the last time you saw the original? Never. Oh, you've never seen the original? No. <laughs> okay. It's been no. only, it's been in a couple years since I've seen it. I watched it a couple years ago on Halloween. We went through like the whole like dead like saga and everything. Let me go into it. I'm not a yeah. huge zombie fan film. Like which is oh, really? probably, like I've seen Night of the Living Dead. I've seen a lot of like the famous ones. I've seen this before. Um mm -hmm. but zombie films usually aren't my my shtick. So um Yeah, they're hit or miss for me. Some are better than others. I feel like there's a lot more bad ones than there are good ones. Um, but I feel like the good ones that are out there are really solid, like ones you can kind of come back to every so often. And funny enough, even though you have Zack Snyder who, you know, he directed this, went on to do I believe three hundred was next, and then Watchmen and then everything after that. The screenplay for this movie was written by James Gunn. <laughs> who ended up doing you know DC guardians of the galaxy and then now he's the head of dc uh, yeah. all the films and everything so james gone went on to have a pretty successful career um and apparently i because i mean i wasn't you know on the message boards or reddit and everything back in the day apparently there's a lot of blowback with james gunn being attached to this movie because he was coming off of the scooby-doo live action movie <laughs> and people were pissed off being like what is this dude writing for scooby-doo like what does he know about dawn of the dead and like zombies Michael and Keaton shit? Effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i mean i think it worked out pretty well i like i wouldn't say there's a ton of similarities between like the screenplay that he wrote for this and like some of the other stuff that he's done i mean there's some humor here and there but i wouldn't say it has a lot in common with what he's done uh, so, know, so going it's forward build. This movie kicked off the MCU and DCU, right? <laughs> I mean, future wise, I guess you could say that as well. Um, but I mean, not only just James Gunn, as far as like the differences in the screenplay compared to everything else he's done. I feel like this, even as his directorial debut, it feels so much different than everything else Zack Snyder's done. Like after this, like you start seeing him throughout the rest of his movies, use so much like his green screen and like CG Slow effects mode. where this, Slow there's mode. so much stuff that's like on location and actually using like sets and stuff. It actually feels like a practical movie compared to yeah. everything else that he's done. <laughs> Cause I mean, 300 is right after this. And that was like a ton of, if not mostly CG, as far as like backgrounds yeah. and everything goes. Dope. I like 300. It, it is dope. I really like 300. <laughs> but I mean, as far as style, like stylistically, this is vastly different from everything else that he's done afterwards. Yeah, I, I can see that. I mean, I, I think some of the framing shots are, are very similar, uh, you mm -hmm. know, like especially when you get like a lot of the people in. Um, but mm -hmm. yes, definitely. I don't think anybody would be like, like you watch Watchmen or 300 or a lot of these movies. Like, oh, that's a Zack Snyder movie. Oh, yeah, you exactly. probably wouldn't pick that up off of this, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, nobody knew about there. it and they're watching this like, oh, Zack Snyder, like what? No way. That it doesn't seem like a Zack Snyder movie at all. But I mean, as far as the cast goes, you got Sarah Pauly as Anna, Ving Rhames, who's like my favorite character of the movie. Uh, yeah. It's Kenneth. This is like, I believe, like 10 years after 
Pulp Fiction, old Marcellus Wallace, yeah. Jake Weber as Michael, which I, I I feel like I've seen him before, but like he just looks like other like actors. I, I feel like I haven't seen a lot of other stuff that he's in, but he's like a main character of this movie. He's like kind of the, the leader of the group in a way, trying to um, he's the one that's coming up with the plans and stuff. I'm the same way with the one security guard, uh, not the good one, the other one, not CJ, CJ dickhead. Not, not CJ, the other kid that gets put in the cell with oh. him. Okay, like, I'm yeah. like, I know that kid, but I looked up his IMDb and I'm like, he was in a Goosebumps episode. So maybe that's where I know him from. <laughs> but like, I don't know where I know this kid from. The dude that plays CJ, Michael Kelly, he's in actually he's in, in a lot of other stuff, but he he's such a great asshole. And pretty yeah. much everything that he plays, he's kind of typecast in a way, but he's a good actor. Uh, Makai Pfeiffer, he's pretty good in this. Is Andre, yep. this is a couple years after uh, 8 Mile, which I did an 8 Mile review a couple months back. Go check that one out. Love him, and you also got Ty Burrell as Steve, Phil from Modern Family, no, which is who knew hilarious. He <laughs> who knew he could be such a dick? I know it's so weird. He's a so sweetheart. Weird. He's a sweetheart we, uh, me and my fiance and that just rewatched the like watched Modern Family a, like a month or so ago. We watched through the whole series again, and it's so weird just to see the you know the contrast so between him and that show and him being such an asshole in this one. And these babies are coming back in a big way. Buy low, sell high. People are gonna see this and say that guy's high. He's, he's uh, such a sweet. It's so weird seeing him in this, especially like towards the end of the movie, what happens. Oh, yeah, definitely. But Ving Rames, he, as soon as he heard that Dawn of the Dead was getting a remake, he's like, he's, he hunted down the producers. He's like, I want to be in that shit. Like, I want to be in a zombie movie. And if you're making Dawn of the Dead, I absolutely want to be a part of it. Kind of similar to the original Dawn of the Dead and the old uh, zombie movies, they used some amputees as zombies, like the ones that were missing legs. Like, you see the one in the parking garage that attacks yeah, the one security up. guard. Uh, so it's kind of cool they start they started doing that again i didn't notice this throughout the actual movie so maybe i'll have to rewatch it at some point and try to see if i notice but they use different colors blood for different zombies depending on like how decomposed they are it'll be like brown and like the mm. ones that are like freshly dead it's like more bright red and everything yeah, i didn't not notice that as i was watching maybe just because i didn't think about like looking at that type of thing but it's kind of cool they mm. actually went in as far as that much detail to it yeah. And I mean, this movie was shot in order, which is kind of rare, especially like in 2004, but it was actually shot in chronological order. They weren't just jumping around for like, you know, save time or anything like that. And what's pretty interesting, she's not in the actual movie, but Heather Langenkamp, the chick that plays Nancy in the original Nightmare on Elm Street, she was part of the production crew for this movie. She's not in the movie itself as an actor, as an actress, but she's part of the production crew, which was pretty cool. It's weird you have her there, though, and you don't put her even a don't cameo. utilize her and like, at way. all like she's there and you couldn't be like hey just like we don't got to put you in makeup you could be just a dead person like they didn't <laughs> use her at all so. yeah i mean you have some other cameos in there like as yeah. far as like i mean you have tom savini uh ken forey from the original dawn of the dead yeah. so like why wouldn't you i mean i know she wasn't part of like a zombie movie or like any of the old still, Rivera ones but like i think a, a lot of people would have recognized her yeah, she's a famous horror kind of. Everybody will recognize her. Yeah, probably even more than some of the other, like Tom Savini, obviously. But like, yeah, like the the guy from the original, like he's not a recognizable face other than people who know this movie. Yeah, you know? that that follow like those old older movies. Mm -hmm. um, but this is also like it seemed like around the whole two thousands, like it, it, especially with this movie, they started the trend of the quick cuts everywhere and you see that throughout like the credits and the beginning and towards the end and also throughout some of the action sequences through the movie itself there's just so many like quick cuts to different things that are happening and it seemed like there are so many movies throughout like the early 2000s that were like jumping on that train like late 90s throughout the the early 2000s i think a uh, resident evil every time yeah just and i mean even i feel like even some of the music in this reminded me of resident Evil, like the resident evil movie yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I got, it's hard to explain time. what it is but it sounds very similar and that we came out like a year or two Very. before this, I believe. I feel uh, after. Nah, eh, probably before. Probably before. 2002, so two years. Two years before this. All two right. years before. So yeah, Dawn of the Dead remake was ripping off Resident Evil a little bit with the uh, the music as far as that goes. I mean, not all the music. There is some actual like uh, like Johnny Cash in there as, like, as far as like the credits goes. There's some music throughout the whole thing, but I Listen, mean... Listen, the, the, like the score just slowed down Disturbed, 
Like I really liked it. I digged it. I even looked it up on uh the lounge like, version. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where it's like chilling. I looked it up on Spotify. I was like, this is pretty good, actually. <laughs> I don't remember it. So like I was like, oh, all I right, think it was uh, cool. Richard Richard Cheese, I think his name is that does it. <laughs> I um I, I remember listening to his stuff like back in like middle school and high school, dude. Like oh, me yeah? and me and Quentin would listen because he has so many like lounge covers of of different just, songs like, heavy stuff i've never gotten into it but when i heard you know, it, it was heavy like, stuff there's like rap songs that he does lounge versions of and everything I was like, this like, is he cool. has a ton of stuff like that it's it's hilarious that's a very Zack snyder thing though like to to put that using kind of like popular songs and stuff yeah, like, like that. but slow down into it i think he does yeah 300 and watchmen so watchmen definitely yeah yeah pretty cool opening sequence i mean not the like the very beginning but the what kind of kicks off the whole you know and infection and you know the pandemic that happens within the movie you get to meet anna she's like a, a nurse at a hospital she's way over her shit like a couple hours way over her shift she's supposed to be out of there already and so the doctors just don't give a fuck whatsoever and he's like why is this dude getting a head scan he's like well he was just bitten on the hand i don't know there were some other issues he was having they just wanted to get him examined and then they found out he was like in the icu and everything and like what's going on here and I, it's just funny how like Anna, as she's going throughout her day or going home, she's just missing everything that's happening. Like there's the radio reports. She ends up like turning the station before she hears what it is yeah. uh, when she goes home. And like, I don't know if it's her husband or, or her boyfriend or whatever, yeah, but whatever. they turn off the TV right when there's a report coming on and everything about what's happening in the world. Like she's missing everything. They just pretty much sleep through the, you know, the chaos that happens throughout the world. It's relatable um, though, because if a thing interrupted my music, I'd skip it too. But nope, nope, nope. It was put a different time that you didn't have streaming or anything. You had to listen to the radio or put a CD in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get to meet like the the one neighbor whenever she gets home, and then, like you kind of have a thing that they have like some sort of bond. Like she said, she wants to like teach her how to skate or something like that. Uh, but like they wake up the next morning to the girl standing in the bedroom door like this lady this girl just walks on over to the neighbor's house and just walks on in and they were he's, totally cool with it yeah he's way too not alarmed if i had to find a neighbor in my house like that i'd be like what the a fuck strange you doing? kid in your house like, what like not even a straight even a neighbor i know like i have neighbors i got kids like even one of their friends standing outside of my ha my door like that i'd be like what the fuck are you doing in your bedroom like what yeah. the like, hell the fuck out of my house and he was like all like sweet cool. like oh what, like, cool. honey what are you doing what are you doing you need help half of her face is like ripped off and everything just goes right at him and man it doesn't take long for these people to turn at all whatsoever he got bit nah. and, like 20 seconds later he started going at anna that depends uh, and on that's a pretty tense feels. scene that depends on what the story feels though and how fast they change <laughs> yeah exactly because there's some other ones throughout the movie that they take, take a little while forever <laughs> i don't know if it's i was trying to think during the movie i was like is it like if it's fatal, it'll do it quickly because his look fatal. His was she like really gets yeah, him in, in the, the beginning. Yeah, she like pulls his neck out. So I'm like, maybe if it's like fatal and you die, it's if it was quicker. like just on your arm. It takes. Yeah, it takes you know, a little a bit, a couple hours or something yeah. like that, because it's very hit or miss, depending on how long this thing takes. But you have that it's a pretty tense scene of him going at her and like, man, I don't know how she didn't get hurt or her son actress didn't get hurt when she like busted into the bathroom and fell into the tub like yeah. it looked like she cracked her head against the tub and everything like Jesus. i thought she broke her ankle because they kind of like come down on her feet a little bit and i was like oh they're gonna show a broken ankle so but yeah it, it she came in hard yeah and she waited way too long in that bathroom like she was like waited to see if he was okay or something and then then she decided to get out and like I, she looked like she heard herself climbing out that window too because it was pretty far drop man i love that opening shot of just all the chaos when she goes out in the middle of like the suburbs and like everything like stuff's on fire there's people running for their lives the one dude like then one neighbor is like holding her at gunpoint like don't get any closer don't get any closer he gets immediately hit by that ambulance <laughs> and it's like i don't know that was like i don't know if you needed that part of it like hit the dude getting hit by the ambulance but just that like the the panning shot of the whole neighborhood and stuff on fire and you see the city in the background burning and it's just all that chaos man it's, it's I don't, wild i don't know if this is the first time they've done this but if it is i've seen so many zombie movies that start with a very similar like set up to this even zombie land mm -hmm. starts with a very similar setup to this like within the suburbs somebody comes in like and maybe this isn't the first movie maybe the original dawn of the dead like i said i've never seen it does it but mm -hmm. like if it doesn't good for them i think they created something that has 
been in a bunch of different movies. There's a Resident Evil that even does this very similar opening. Yeah. Like in like a suburb like that. So good for it if it is the first one. Yeah. And I mean, there's a lot of creative shots too. Like during that little. See, this is where I would have probably cut the credits. Like had your credits kind of interspliced with this. Cause I feel like the, the time that they do go to credits, it feels weird compared to like this feels like where you would have normally have it uh but there's a lot of cool shots of like just the camera on the back of the car or on the front of the car as she's going throughout the neighborhood and you have that like uh the helicopter camera that's kind of slowly zooming in you see that truck just fly into the gas station and blow up that's one of my cool notes creative though. shots when that gas station blows up she's driving straight and you can tell it's cgi because it doesn't move <laughs> like if a gas station would blow up beside me you'd have swerved a little bit you know she is a perfectly <laughs> A scoop driver, just like, nope, not my problem. <laughs> just like <laughs> on the road, on the right track. If that gas, I'd be like, shit, <laughs> like that'd be crazy. But she is, yeah. old. she's on, she's a good driver. That's all I'm saying. She's a good driver. Well, I mean, that she fucking, like, she stops to take a look at something, and then that dude, like, ambulance dude, like, tries to rip her out of her car, and she just fucking yeah. takes off, and then she just crashes into a tree. Yeah. So she's not that great of a driver. She wasn't paying attention. Do you think that guy would have chased her? I mean, I guess the car is broken. Maybe he just wanted the car. I'm like, you think he didn't chase her down? She didn't kill him. He, he could have said anything. The dude was just like, get out of the car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, 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 try to talk to her. I think she would have been okay. Like, you could have been one. Of, you could have been a character in this movie, man. Come on. Yeah, Please. exactly. Like she might have given you a ride if you were actually nice. Like knock on the window. Hey, you not turned? You haven't been bit? Can I'm I get scared a ride? too. I'm scared too. <laughs> Can I get in? <laughs> but yeah, like she, she uh, crashes into that tree, and this is where you have the credits. And I actually I like the credits, like the Johnny Cash song, yeah. spliced with all the news coverage and all the mayhem that's happening across the world. You have like the government being asked questions, like, "Oh, is this like viral?" And it's like. Oh, we don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'll have all their answers. How's it spread? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. And it's like, that's very troubling. Like, if you're watching the news and you hear all this, you're like, oh, my God. What What are we going to do? You, do? Mean you don't know. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know? But a lot of cool shots, like like uh, the the news footage and, you know, just the, the different things they show throughout the world. It looks like there's actually, like, real life footage from, like, riots and stuff that are kind of interspliced. I don't know if everything was, like, directly shot for the movie. Yeah, it was kind of cool how they did that. As soon as it comes back from credits, you have her fall out of the car and immediately have a shotgun up to her head. Big Rames. <laughs> Just Best badass. Like, movie. Like, like, you what bit, you or like, what does he say? He asked her to say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, say something. Bad. He's a badass. He's such. He's the best badass. part of this movie. He has a. He has a great line later in the movie. I, I, I'll. I'll make sure to bring up. I had it written down, but he's he's very memorable. He doesn't say too much. He's kind of the leader, but he also has has some funny moments throughout the movie as well. Uh, but he's no nonsense. No, no, yeah, yeah, he's he's not into he's not into the nonsense, and you'd see that very much in a couple scenes here, like when he's getting shot at, he was no nonsense. And I forget what she says because he asked her to say something. I don't, I don't remember if she's like please or if she says sorry or something I think like she that. Says, please, I think she says yeah, please help. but it's something yeah. like that you would like immediately immediately associate with like somebody actually like being all there it's not like a zombie like i i mean other movies you have zombies that say like little words or here and there or something like that but like her having seems like i don't know like a soul like has some compassion like like nope. her first word it's whatever total um, opposite why only because you need know you're dealing with zombies anybody mm -mm, please help you don't go towards that shit never go towards that shit ever <laughs> like nah i'm good well it takes them so movies. long to figure out that the fucking like the virus like gets transmitted by act like being bitten like yeah. it takes them till like the middle of the movie for them to even like oh it's being bitten that's what does it and everything is like that's all think you would just <laughs> it's all zombie movies man where there, there ain't a single person who's ever seen zombie media like this is 2004 and it looks like it takes place in 2004 yeah there's been so zombie, zombie movies at zombie that movies exist at this point and they're all like what are these like you fucking know what they are not one person was like oh that was that's a zombie that's a have fucking have you seen zombie. dawn of the dead or have you, exactly. have you seen like night of the living dead or some shit that is one of my <laughs> biggest complaints with most zombie movies they all act like they ain't never seen anything like this and i'm like like that's ridiculous this shit's been a media forever like somebody yeah. needs to be like nah that's a fucking zombie you know <laughs> this Ain't is how no you way. kill it this is how you kill it shoot to the head i don't need a newsreel media i don't, don't need get it bit. don't get i don't scrapped. need tom savini to tell me 
I'm fucking no. I know to shoot that thing in the head. <laughs> like, get the fuck <laughs> out of here. It doesn't take long to meet some of the other main characters. Like, literally, as soon as she meets up with Ving Rhames, they walk like 20 steps and then they meet, into they run into Mackay Pfeiffer and his wife and the, the other dude, Michael, which is like, I don't know how they didn't notice them. Like yeah. they, the other group got the drop on them and they're just kind of standing at the other end of the tunnel. Like you didn't see them just standing there. How did they get the drop on you? But yeah. they were immediately like, Hey, we going to go check out this mall and everything. So, which is I just mean, right up the hill, just <laughs> right up the hill. <laughs> just very next scene. <laughs> just right. Not up many the, people there thought. either. There's not many yeah, nobody. zombies. No, was it hard there. for them to get in? No, nope. they're the first people to get there other than the security <laughs> guards, but especially watching this movie, it makes me want to like get the, uh, the dead rising remake that came out like it makes this me want to movie, run through a mall and just kill zombies and stuff this has to have been the inspiration for this i'm sure if we read like the imdb of this movie it's got to be the inspiration for dead rising right like oh it has to be i mean even be. the mall in this movie looks very similar to looks, the mall like the, the outside fountain, of it. even yeah. the fountain right at the doorway because that is exactly how dead rising's entrance is there's an entrance and then there's a fountain like right there and i'm like this mm-hmm. is this is Dawn. Of, I mean, I'm that's not news to any of the viewers here, but this yeah. I mean the original one was set in the mall as well. I just feel like the 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 original from what I remember, it was very like slow. Like the pace of it was very slow compared to this one where it seems like there's there's always something happening in uh, this one. Let's do out of order. Let's let's review the original later. I mean we can. Let's go, let's uh, go we, out we order. wanted to cover this one because it was the twentieth anniversary. Twentieth anniversary. Yeah, we should Absolutely. definitely go back and do like the original Romero trilogy and everything. I'd definitely be down to do that. I own the first one. I have the Criterion collection back there. Like I do I, love I do have the, the original. I love the first uh, Night of the Living Dead, and I actually mm-hmm. like the one. I'm not going to get the name right, but the one where the the ch- like badass chick, she's like half zombie, and she does all like the crazy like things to her. I don't know if you remember. I don't it's remember like, that one. It's like a, it's a later one, but it's super was it a Romero candid. one. Oh, uh, probably not. I mean, it's based off oh. of the <laughs> blank of the dead, whatever. It's either oh, okay. you know, gotcha. Return of the Dead, Dawn, of, whatever it is. But yeah, it's crazy. I, I know Zack Snyder came back and he did the like Army of the Dead a couple years ago for Netflix, and apparently I that saw wasn't that. that great. I'm gonna look it up, uh, but go ahead. I didn't see go. it, um, but apparently that wasn't great. So I mean. They're actually kind of smart. As soon as they get into this mall, they immediately like, we got to make sure these doors are locked. So like they, they check the front doors. Those are locked. But Kai Pfeiffer goes and checks the one and then you have like a pretty gnarly practical effect on the one zombie that like sticks his face up to the door. It's missing like half of its face and yeah, everything it's all cut off. But I don't know why Michael went to the one sporting goods store because they should have been checking the like the doors to go outside. And he just goes to the sporting goods store and looks around. But he makes the dumbass decision to, to exchange his crowbar for a croquet mallet. Yeah, like, what are you doing, dude? Why would you put the crowbar metal. down? Exactly. Like, what are you doing? I mean, you got you got some more length. I can understand that. But as you see, when he gets attacked, it's like one or two hits and that shit breaks immediately. <laughs> At least why yeah, would that comes go in handy, though. Yeah, I mean, he ends up putting that uh, like the, the broken piece of the croquet mallet up through the, the head of the one zombie, which is a pretty cool effect. While he's getting attacked there, that's when you get the, the other survivors that are around the, the fountain they get attacked yeah. like ving rames gets attacked in the fountain he ends up like cutting himself on like the, the metal where the water comes out anna picks up the shotguns and ends up shooting the zombie it doesn't kill him but it seems like it fucks his brain up because he doesn't really know what to do he's just flailing yeah, like around later him. he's just like twitching yeah he doesn't know how and that's what they they call him twitchers, twitchers yeah. <laughs> like on the the tv because as you see with the security guards uh because right after this, they end up getting in the elevator and go up, and that's where you run into CJ and the other two security guards. The one dude's a rookie. CJ Fair. is just a complete asshole. Is not going to allow him in at all. He's like, you can go right the fuck back down there where you came from. We I'm got with this CJ up here. sometimes, dude. Like I, I know, he's under, like I totally understand villain. at certain points. He has his he has his comeback later in the movie, but I'm with CJ a lot of the time. Like you guys are dumb as shit. Stop doing stuff like this. Yeah, stop doing stupid shit. Like oh my god, I'm, I'm on girl. I'm on a lot. The girl like Anna and them like. Oh. Oh my you want to try to rescue some people if they're there already, but like you don't need to go out of your way like to help some people that are outside of the mall. Like these people We're, are already within the mall. All you got to do is just verify none of them are bit, and then you you guys are Gucci at that point. I feel like we're not there yet, but the one fucking girl, man, she is she's the antagonist of this movie. I know oh, it's yeah. gonna make it CJ <laughs> and Phil. I know his name's not Cole? Phil. Is that who you're but talking yeah. about? Oh yeah, she's the, fucking problem. <laughs> the dumbest one in the whole movie. She's the goddamn problem. We haven't met her yet. We're getting there, but she's a fucking problem. You yeah. Problem. So I mean, they take the elevator up, and that's like you run into the cops. They end up. 
convincing them to let them stay. They have to hand over all their guns. You know, the security guards are in charge. This is where you actually get to see some of like the actual, you know, reports on the TV. You get to see that you have the uh, Tom Savini cameo where he's talking about like the twitchers and yeah, you got to make sure to put a head. bullet in their head, shoot them in the head to kill them. Burn them. And he says and burn, burn which the never bodies. comes up. Never comes up again, but he does say it. Yeah, I mean, they just, they just end up throwing the bodies off the roof. They don't yeah. even burn them at any point, I'm pretty sure. I believe this is where you have the the Ken Forey cameo. If not, it's just like a little bit later. The dude that was in the original Night of the Living, uh, Dawn of the Dead. But he says the classic line from the original movie, too, or is like, When there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Which is such a cool fucking line. That's a cool one. Ving Rhames, he, he mentions, because they see on the TV about it's Fort there's Fort Pastor is like where the army's going. It's like where a lot of people can show up. It's like a quarantine zone. He mentions that's where his brother's at and he has to get to his brother. Anna is sewing up his arm. And funny enough, she, the, uh, they actually had a registered nurse there to do like the sewing, like the up close stuff on it. But she wasn't listening. She didn't know what the director meant by going a little deeper. So he actually sewed the practical effect to Ving Rhames' arm. <laughs> and he didn't tell her until after they were done, like, shooting the scene and everything. Um, but that's why it looks so damn real is because she has what actually man. going into his arm. And a lot of the blood in it is actually his blood from sewing him up. And he, I guess Zack Snyder was like, man, that, that effect looks great. How'd you do that? <laughs> and he didn't tell him until after they were done. I'm like, yeah, you probably want to get this the hell off my arm now. Anytime Wait. now. We also didn't say um, the um, uh, Pfeiffer's wife at this point. She gets she gets grabbed. She yeah, she gets grabbed she like gets whenever grabbed. they were fighting with Ving Rhames. Uh, but yeah, you just yeah, think yeah. it's a scratch because it looks like a scratch. It doesn't look like a bite or anything like that. Yeah. Um, she, but she she it, has a mark though. We, yeah, we're no, we but they never this. dive into that either. They mention about the bites turning people. They don't really talk about just scratch scratches turning people. Or I anything think she like was that. bit. I think she was, was she like. Bit? I, th- I think she was just nipped because he says a line in the very next scene, actually, where he's like bandage her up. He's like, he could have chomped your whole arm off. You got to consider yourself lucky. And I yeah. think that is like, maybe he'd like just nicked her, you know, like, okay. he just like got her. Yeah. Because when they show like the brief it, shot of her arm, yeah, it just, just looks uh, like she got cut or something. Yeah. I took it as like maybe the teeth dragged across her or something. Maybe. Yeah. It so. That way it doesn't actually look like a bite mark. Yeah. So Mike talks to CJ and he's like, hey, man. We're all here. We might as well try to get some help. Like, let's make some signs, like put some shit up on the roof. Try to like there's helicopters still flying around and planes and stuff. Try to get some attention to some people to help us out. And he's like, I mean, he's not a complete dick. He listens to them at certain points. He is a dick. He makes Uh, it sound like it's his idea. Like, yeah, I thought of that. Yeah, that's a great idea. (laughs) All right, guys, you're going to go ground up some paint. And then he starts (laughs) ordering everybody around. (laughs) <laughs> like it was his idea, but they end up like making the sign up on the roof. It's not even a sign. They just paint the damn roof, like help us. And then you have the helicopter that just flies right over top of them and just like, completely ignores them. And that's when you, they meet Andy, the dude yep. it's in the gun shop across the street or across the way. And he's like holding up the sign, talking to him. And that, that turns into a, a kind of a cool plot point of the movie throughout the whole thing where they're kind of just talking back and forth between like the, the whiteboards and everything. Yeah, it's a cool little friendship. Security guards go down and like kill their buddy that was in the fountain that attacked the group earlier. That was one of the other security guards. Sure. They end up throwing all the bodies of the zombies off the roof. I think it's Ving Rames that says it like, why are like why would they come here? Because you see a lot more of the zombies are starting to you know congregate to the mall and everything. And they like, is it memory? Is it instinct? Why would they come here? Or is they just know we're here? <laughs> are they just coming after us? Type thing. I, I feel like it's got it because they know they're there, right? Like, I feel you would think so. You would assume so. They smell something fresh. Yeah, I feel like at least in this universe, I I feel like there's not much of a brain left for them to think like, oh, I'm going to go to the mall. That's what I used to do before I was dead. Type Exactly. The security locks them in one of the stores overnight. Like they're really being precautious about this. They lock everybody in there in like the stores with the shutters and everything. This is where you have the Ken Forey cameo because that's when the TVs wake up wake them up on the timer at like eight in the morning uh and the one like the younger kid goes out and anna convinces him to let her out to go to the bathroom and everything and that's when everybody else ends up getting out on their by themselves you don't see them get out they just end up busting out eventually because you hear the uh i believe it's the truck outside yeah yeah, yeah. cj's pissed because this dude did fuck up cj had it under control (laughs) he did have it under control even though it's like He's a dick. He was very, yeah, he's being very, pre- a little too precautious at certain yeah. points, but I understand it. 
Nah, man. Um, CJ had some, I wouldn't let these people in either. I wouldn't let them in. <laughs> Not those people in the truck, especially no. like when you find out how many there were. There's there was no reason to do that. Yeah, uh, especially with some of the people that were in there too, like not used to the fuck outside. <laughs> no, dude. That fucking lady who turns into a zombie later. I'm sorry, we're getting there. So they see the yeah. truck. This thing comes around and it like busts. Like they like park basically. Good driving on their part. This chick's an awesome driver. Back it straight she, up to that back you know, the door. straight up into that door. Like it bounces a little bit, but she gets there. So they have what probably eight new survivors that shuffle in yeah because it was six in the back of the truck and then i think there was like two or three in the front yeah um but i like that funny scene between like andre mckay pfeiffer and the other dude michael at the door he's like we gotta go out we gotta rescue him he's like fuck no <laughs> I, i'm not you can <laughs> and he's like all right on three and he's like nope no nope, i'm not doing it and then they go to push the door open and it's, it's like, locked he's like, like i got it idiot <laughs> <laughs> that is a good scene i actually um and pfeiffer's character is dumb later, but I like oh, his yeah. character through most of this movie. Uh, most of this movie, he's one of the best parts of the film. Like, yeah, he, you have part. a little bit of character development with him and Ving Rhames there whenever they're like cleaning themselves up in the bathroom, where he's like, I've done a lot of bad shit in my life. Like, I want to do something that'll like mit- have an opportunity to change things. Um, he's like, I think I'm here for a reason. And I think, because he's like talking to Ving Rhames like he was like a preacher, because he says, like, Oh, you look like you, you were church, a ch- yeah. church going man or whatever. And like Ving Rhames is like, Go in the stall, say five. Hail Marys, wipe your ass, and you and God can call it even. <laughs> I, I'm gonna get a little on my soapbox later when we start talking about whether I, you know, buy it or whatever. But this is my problem with most of zombie movies. I don't feel like there's enough character development in most zombie movies, and this one is yeah. no joke the same way. Mm-hmm. I think to this point where the people are starting to come in, we are doing okay. But then, like, once the new people are introduced, it, this is a flash montage of just people living in a mall. And I'm like, there yeah. is almost zero. Like, I don't care about any of these people at this no. point, you know, just like the original core, just the original. Yeah, like, the only things you find core. out are really what kind of loans itself to the actual plot at certain points. Like Steve, uh, the dude from modern family has a boat. he has a yacht he mentions yeah. he has a boat of, like eventually even the um, main character is like what's the best thing you did i was a dad like like come on man. <laughs> brings everybody down at dinner and that's yeah, it. Like, this, is the worst. <laughs> this is like such bad character development and, and listen it's not just a this movie thing it's most zombie films of this elk you yeah know? it's yeah. like I, feel I think like you could have is... grown upon that if you would have kept like the survivors you had. But yeah, adding eight more people to that definitely complicates things a little bit more. <laughs> it just gets so two thousands here soon, where it's a flash cut of Phil having sex and people like trying on clothes. And like this could have been used to like really like like and listen, I'm not against like people having fun in movies like this. One of my favorite like old school horror films is a movie called like Night of the Comet, which is very mm-hmm. similar. They get trapped in a mall and you have a very similar scene. But like, I need some care. I need to know who these people are, especially if you want me to care about them. You care about three people in this movie, maybe, maybe. Yeah. And the stuff you find out, like, it doesn't make you care about them a lot. Like Anna, she was, you assume she's like the main character in the movie. She's just a nurse who you just care her, about her because you've been following her the longest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, there's not much else other than she's a nurse. And it doesn't even dive into her like husband or boyfriend being killed at any no. point. Uh, the Michael dude he puts everything out at that dinner about as far as his wife. Like he's like, I'm a bad, I was a bad husband. Yeah, but I'm a, I was a great home. father. Dad. I was a great dad and everything, but that's as far as pretty much you go with his character development. Uh, the CJ dude, the asshole security, he does have like his, his change. He, gets, of heart, he comes like back. His he's change. actually, he turns into the best character for me personally. Yeah. Like, cause he ends up bad. saving a lot of them towards the end. Yeah. Like um, as it goes, he like kind of goes and the bad husband, good father shit, like bullshit, dude. Like if you're a bad husband you're probably a bad dad too yeah <laughs> and not not that you're like directly bad to your children but you have to realize what you do as a husband affects your kids too so maybe stop doing that shit you know yeah and i, I mean know. even ving rames uh, even though i as much as i like his character and everything there's not much to him other than him just saying yeah i have a brother at that fort i gotta meet up with and that goes pretty much away in this next scene because that's when like when the survivors come in 
they talk it's... about the fort yeah. and they're like yeah that's a lost cause like there's nobody yeah. left there or is like what is because it's the uh, phil from modern family he's the asshole he's like yeah i, I mean he's if honest. you want to call it alive yeah he's like <laughs> he whatever they, they are like, he's like they went down they and then they came back up <laughs> yeah so i mean even bing reigns at that point he was like i gotta go i gotta go see who all's left i gotta go rescue my brother and then as soon as he makes it up to the roof that's when he, like he has that little moment with andy again yeah. like talking with him because he says like uh if andy asks if there's like a status update and then he's like the fort's gone like there's no hope left and then he's like well what else is new or what's, what's the bad, the bad news, news? <laughs> the bad? so that like that's when like ving rames kind of has the change of heart he's like all right it's probably my best interest to stay here <laughs> i yeah. can't i can't go out there and risk my life but out, out of those survivors you already mentioned you have that older lady they have to fucking carry in in the fucking wheelbarrow. They're wheeling her like at that she point, like terrible. she's gone. She looks dead. She looks terrible. Why are you keeping her here? Terrible. Like even at that, at that point, even if it wasn't outside. a zombie thing, and even if it was just like a hey, I'm in some kind of apocalypse that I have to survive. Like at some point, you got to be like, hey, this maybe our resources aren't best for this person. You know. That's terrible. Yeah. That's terrible of me to say. I guess. I'm CJ. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a it's a zombie apocalypse. You got to start thinking that way, though. I'm CJ in this group. I'm a dick. I'm like, <laughs> nah, probably not. Probably shouldn't let that person in. <laughs> I'd be the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, it doesn't take long for her to turn, which is kind of funny scene. Like it's such it's the, right. the effects in it are pretty cool because like her eyes roll back and she like the way she looks is all gross. Like the, it looks like she's decomposing. They put the towel over her or the blanket over her and she like raises up with the blanket on and everything. And then she has um, like it looks like her eyes are like the chemical symbol. I know it's not, but like what? Yeah, it, like, what you it see kind of like, like the the green, like the, the haze start going. Yeah, in her it looks eyes. like it's the chemical symbol. It does a little bit, but she attacks Anna, and Anna ends up killing her with like the uh, the fireplace poker. Mm -hmm. That's when Anna comes up with the idea, like yeah, it's it's bites that are trying that is affecting everybody. It's bites that are turning people. And they instantly uh, right off. They're like, yep, that's it. It's it's bite, and they end up believing her, and they're like, "Well, any anybody else is bitten, we either gotta we gotta quarantine him, and then Mike's like, "No, we gotta yeah. kill him." Yeah. <laughs> the, it was pretty like hard drop where they're like, "Yep, that's gotta be it. That's gotta be it." <laughs> and I was like, "I I can understand like if you want to kill him, um, I can also stand understand if you want to quarantine." I, I mean, to be honest, the best bet would probably just to kill him right away. But as far as like humanity goes, I would probably wait for them to like. Turn. Put him in one of the stores, lock him up, wait for him to turn, then kill him type thing. Like, I feel like, I mean, obviously, it's people you don't know, but at the I same can't. time, I, I don't want to kill someone in front of their kid until they're like an actual zombie type thing. I actually do <laughs> like that scene where she's like, go ahead, do it, shoot him, shoot it, and she, shoot him. She too. makes him confront him. Yeah. yeah. She's like, shoot him too. He's injured. And he's like, whoa, I wasn't bit. The other, I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, to that the, guy. the redneck but type. He's like, whoa, I wasn't like, my bit. My ankles just fucked up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> i haven't seen this dude in too much the the sick dude the guy that got bit that she he's talking to i know he's in the watchman that Zack snyder directed and he actually has a really good scene he because he's the uh i think he's the one old super villain i don't know when the last time you saw it but he ends up having like cancer and shit he's like dying of cancer and he has like this whole monologue i think it's with a uh, rorschach i'm pretty sure or, or one of them but he plays a great character in watchman so it was kind of interesting that i recognized him in this one and then a couple years later he did watchman but he's he's pretty good in this one too. It's kind of yeah. heartbreaking with like his daughter and everything. Like she doesn't want to let him go, and then like she even like walks out with him because they end up putting him in that store with Ving Rames. He just sits there waiting for him with that shotgun to turn. I would, I would sit there with him, take shifts watching him. You know, exactly. That's, That's probably I, the smart way to do it. Because yeah. I mean, I wouldn't feel comfortable killing somebody until they're a fucking zombie. He even has they're going to be all there. crying and, and he's a good like or... monologue and you you put doubt within the group also like if you kill them when they're human you know you got yeah, exactly so they turn, you know like hey i'm not going to kill him you got to be outside this gate and we're going to watch if he turns or not you know yeah and i think they when did it in a good way too because like you see him just stop breathing and he's just sitting there and then you see ving rames walk up to him and then you hear the gunshot yeah. whenever they go back you to the, the other streak. characters yeah you hear the streak in the gunshot andre is comforting his his wife at the baby store and they mention about uh how they want to have like she wants to have like a russian name for the baby and he wants like an african name but you could tell something's not right like they're they're, they're staying away from everybody else this guy turns sick this guy turns real sick the Pfeiffer <laughs> fiver's character he yeah turns, andre yeah he turns real sick later <laughs> yeah um but yeah this is like you mentioned where you have the the montage of yeah. you know you have down with the sickness sung by richard cheese the lounge version down with the sickness 
and it's just you know them hitting golf balls off the roof you know playing chess having, playing chess the one dude sex. fucking in the mall yeah. they're watching the movies minute. they were watching animal house at, yeah. at one point this just is like a 10, 10 minute montage of them just chilling and that's where you have the funny scene of they're up on the roof and they're like giving andy like celebrity lookalikes like jay yeah. leno and he's like he's... picking them off with their rifle <laughs> like jay leno and then there's like burt reynolds that's where you have like the some like fun element to Ving Rhames character because he has more of a connection with Andy across the street it seems Andy. more than anybody else out of the group yeah. he's actually in <laughs> no that, those are good I mean this is the montage obviously is like a little forced character development but like yeah but I mean it's I think it's expected assuming you have you have that in the original as well whereas like what are these people going to be doing in a mall by themselves when there's nothing else to do so you're going to be doing what anybody would do in a mall just going around having fun that I mean yeah I guess that makes it feel in being... a little bit Maybe I'm being too critical. I feel like we could actually watch them being lived in a little bit where. Yeah. Then instead of having an actual montage. Yeah. I'm not even against montages. It's like, I, I get the point, but like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just didn't love it. Didn't love it. I was like, eh, this feels kind of <laughs> I didn't have much of a problem with it, but Andre, he starts getting a little sus because they, they mentioned like they want to go and like visit the wife. They haven't seen her in a little bit. And he's like, no, don't worry about it. She's fine. Just getting stuff set up for the baby and everything. Like, don't worry about it. You could stay away from the baby store. Yeah. And like, what, what's going on over there, Andre? You being a little sus, man. You yeah, keeping I'm a your nurse. wife away from everyone. Maybe you should show the nurse your pregnant wife, who's very pregnant. <laughs> I didn't yeah. even think about that, right? She's <laughs> very pregnant, probably due any day, and you don't have the nurse looking over her. Yeah, like, come on now. Once. I never even thought about that. You're right. <laughs> not once. Like, you think she would have questions like, hey, just want to make sure she's all right, doing a good like yeah, she has everything she needs. Oh, even the wife, she says, like, oh, we need a hospital, you know, like we need to get we can't yeah. do it here. And he's like, no, we can do it here. People, People been have been having babies, babies for thousands of years without exactly. hospitals. What do you mean? Exactly. We don't need a hospital. Like, But they have a nurse. This is where he starts <laughs> turning. He's kind of a dick light later. Like, he doesn't treat this woman yeah. very right at all. Well, we're about to come up onto that because this is where they have they're having like the little dinner scene, and this is where fucking everyone's having fun, like just you know, asking each other questions about like life before everything happened, and then like Michael just bums everybody out talking about his being a bad husband and a good father and whatnot, just brings the, the whole thing, mood down. The question was worst job too. Yeah, like, worst job. Like, I don't know if you that. want to classify it as a job, but he purposely did that. Could have someone just, said just be McDonald's. like that wasn't the question, Michael. <laughs> yeah, like Jesus, Michael, <laughs> like bumming now but this is where you have the power go out at the mall uh and that sort of shit just really starts hitting the fan at that point you cut back to andre and you find out he has his wife tied to yeah. the bed and at, at this like little children's store and she's turning like you can see like the the veins and everything on her belly is like all green her eyes are like turning like the the greenish haze white and everything it's looking gnarly it's not looking good for his wife at this, point. this this that like whole scene is colored very well and i know that sounds weird but like the lighting makes it look way gr looks like, like a bluish like yeah, dark yeah it's like grimy in that like in that nursery so yeah, and that's not that's saying something. I feel like the whole movie has like a filter over top, like a like a greenish, like dark filter over the whole movie, and it gives you like that, like a weird, yeah, like the griminess of like it, like a griminess it's, feel yeah. to it. Yeah, I say that as a compliment. I think this, I actually think this baby scene is as ridiculous as it is 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 a great scene of her <laughs> tied to bed and stuff. Michael was going to take the guards with him down in because they have to go through the uh, the parking yep. garage to Man. go turn on the power and everything. What I got here, it's a good scene. And CJ was like, I ain't going out there without a fucking gun, man. He like gives him a fireman's axe. And then Ving Rames comes down in, and this is my favorite line of his. He's like, You coming with us? Nah, you coming with me. <laughs> He's like, Nah, y'all coming with me. I'm leading this outfit. But yeah, this is a pretty cool scene. I, they're walking to that park garage, and that one dude you mentioned, he's just like, I hear something. I see something around here. He's like, Nah, you didn't see shit. Don't worry about it. And they end up coming across that dog, and then you have the, the amputee zombie somehow leap his way up and bite that dude's I feel neck like he's crawling on the on the roof i feel like he was crawling yeah because he like dropped down he, yeah like, it looked like he either left leapt off of something or he dropped down off the ceiling i don't know how he got up there in the first place see uh, i think they yeah. should have went further with that I, what i took that it was is the dog ate its legs so i thought like a lot of the zombies should have been like crawling on the pipes you know like all of them should oh. Dropping thought, down at him. And dropping stuff, down at him, but it, it's just the one zombie. But like that's how I took it because the legs were missing. Not he wasn't an. I know the the actor was an amputee. Yeah, the legs. 
we're missing but, like, though. But the at the eggs are just like eaten or whatever. So I was like, I think the dog ate them. I thought they should have went <laughs> further with that. They should have the zombie dog at a certain point. That I'm cool, cool without the zombie dog. Like that was fine <laughs> with me. But like I would have been like if they weren't attacking it, he is right. A dog would be eating people. Like a dog will survive. So I yeah. thought like it'd be cool to have like a bunch of zombies just like <laughs> like I know that'd be very Resident <laughs> Evil, but like I yeah, cool. but yeah, you have that chase throughout the parking garage. They end up getting I don't know how that fence held up as well as it did against all the zombies coming at them because they just yeah. have that shootout. They just sitting there blasting at those dudes uh, until Michael ends up getting the idea to use the gas and he covers them all with the gas and they end up lighting them on fire, which I guess that, that's where they do have it here. They end up lighting them on fire. Yeah. Uh, they didn't shoot him in the head first before they lit him on fire, but they they got some of them out. Yeah. This is where you cut back to Andre you know, with his wife and this is where his wife ends up just dying and she ends up turning and he has to like put the belt around her mouth so she doesn't bite him and everything. The old lady decides to go and, and visit them. The lady that was driving the truck at the to get the survivors to the mall, she ends up going to visit them and the baby is born and man, I don't know what he's thinking at this point. Maybe it's just because he, he lost his wife and now he sees that his baby is gone. Like maybe just went oh, yeah, crazy. Yeah. I don't know. But like it's very he, out of character. Yeah. She was doing what she should have did where she came in, saw the wife was turned, shoots the God. wife in the head. He's like, Oh, you just you just gonna kill my wife? Is that you gonna what you gonna do? Family? You gonna kill my, you gonna kill my, my family? family? Yeah. Like, bro, your family's already dead. I don't know I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh you're not gonna have much of a family if you wanna keep him alive. But yeah, she kills his wife and then he immediately they just have that shootout where she's shooting him and he's shooting she's her shooting. and they both <laughs> they both die. This is where um, a little slow mo Zack Snyder comes in. There's a little slow mo in this. Yeah, you have a little bit of that slow mo yeah, that you not see crazy. throughout all little, the rest of his movies. A little bit here. He goes overboard with through all the rest of his movies. Yeah. They they come back and they see the aftermath, and then you have the the zombie baby. <laughs> <laughs> that you only get to see for a couple seconds before they end up shooting it and killing it off, off screen. screen. So you don't yeah. want to, sh- you don't want to show a baby getting shot on screen. This zombie baby be fine. <laughs> Shoot it. Zombie it's baby. It's fine. It was a pretty cool effect though. Like as far yeah, as zombie funny. babies go. Also how neat. threatening is a zombie baby? It's got no teeth. Like is that threatening? <laughs> it's got a gum on you. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> Even like a hillbilly zombie, like an old person zombie with like no teeth. I don't know. Like maybe like the scratching. It, maybe, I don't know if scratching will turn people or not. I don't know if it's just bites or scratching. I don't know. If a zombie with dentures bites you, does that turn you because the saliva got in? Or does it have to <laughs> I, yeah, maybe. I, I would say yes because of the saliva. Uh, that's that's the only reason I would say yes. <laughs> Bing Rams ends up having this speech, which is kind of neat about how, because he was in the he was a cop how he had to like bury many of many of men and go to like a ton of funerals and mourn them and he's like i always thought to myself we're better than me or whatever yeah, he's yeah. like now i can't think that way like i have to worry about the people that i'm with and worry about myself and help others and stuff which is you know he's kind they're trying to shove a little tiny bit of character development here for a couple of these people it doesn't work very well because of how many characters you have and it's not really a ton you can do with them. I, I don't know. I, I think it worked for him just because, I mean, I like the character. They give him a little bit more depth depth compared to everybody else, I would say. The only thing I disagree with this scene is they're all like, oh, we're just going to sit here and wait to die. Like, what What do you mean? Like, you guys have a good spot. Like, I get it. The island plan is hatched at this scene where they're like, hey, let's get the fuck out of here. Let's go on a boat. Let's get somewhere, you know, but like, cause he just says it like nonchalantly. He's, he's just trying to be a smart ass. He's like, Oh yeah, just fucking drive out across the whole city and just get on my yacht and just go to the island or whatever. He's like, yeah, that's exactly what we're fucking going to do. That's great. And then I don't love that they're like an island that may or may not exist. Like, what do you mean? May, may or may not exist. Like, you guys know, like you've lived here. Does the island yeah. exist or not? This is right? an unexplored waters. It either exists or it doesn't. <laughs> You know, you should, somebody should know. I don't know. I didn't love. I would say in the mall personally. I'm not. I'm not trying to go to like. You don't know what, what all is out there. I mean, you at least you have food and shelter and everything at the mall. It's got to have so much food, and even on the roof, you could start making like a farm. And, and now, now we're getting to like a survival apocalypse plan. But like, <laughs> you could start making. I, a could, I understand meat. what you mean, though. Like you're there. You're safe. You're barricaded. You have. You have stuff, you know, like, yeah, whether, I know it doesn't go hairy until you do what you're trying to do for the other plan. Like you would have been even, fine if you would have stayed up in the mall, even the guy across the way, like they're 
there's a sports store. There's not a fucking climbing rope that you could just absolutely launch over to him and then wheel him back, you know, above everybody. Something like, come on, this is a fucking mall. There's got to be something you can come up with. So, like, they had, they sent the dog over at one point. Why wouldn't you? Why couldn't you have connected one end of the rope to the dog to run over? Run over then, exactly. Then tie the rope off. Have the dude shimmy over or whatever. Yeah, he was blind. in a sporting's good show. There's not a crossbow in there or a bow and arrow that you can take fifty shots and try to shoot something over to the guy. So you many know? options. He didn't, he didn't seem that far away. Like far <laughs> there's enough. so many options. So many options. I didn't love it. And they come up with the plan too. They're going to armor a couple of the mall shuttles that they have there, and then they're driving through the city to get to the docks so they can get on this boat and go to the island. And hopefully there's not going to be any fucking zombies at this island. Crazy fucking plan when you do have a mall with everything that's there, right? Exactly. Because there's saying. no guarantee you're going to get help on an island and there's no guarantee there's not going to be zombies there. So it's like you are you're in a mall where the zombies aren't in it yet. So, I mean, it's like, why wouldn't you just stay safe? And what does point. an island bring you that this other than like, OK, farming and stuff is probably much better or well, you're not going to have any of the supplies. Yeah, you're not going to like the mall brings all the supply. I could figure out farming on the roof. You know, it might be yeah. very limited farming, but I could figure it out. You know, I think there's like, a better chance of you being rescued at the mall than on a fucking island somewhere. Exactly. But then people aren't going to th- assume that there's people at <laughs> and these things <laughs> are dead. What already. if they just walk underwater? We don't know. Oh, exactly know. they're dead they can just walk under the water maybe they can't swim but they float up on the island i don't like it i just don't like it yeah i think i think it was a dumb plan i think they they should have just been smart and stayed the whole time so Stay. I mean, we're, we're been totally there on that one it's totally different if they just stayed <laughs> <laughs> so this is where you have another montage of them fixing up the the mall shuttles you know armoring and putting metal across the whole outsides they have their they hook up plows to the front and they like spray paint like teeth to make them look like jaws on there and everything uh Which they have beautiful. like the little slits in the side so they can run chainsaws through and everything's kind of neat yeah but again dumb idea yeah, it comes up later, but it does come idea. up again later. They use uh propane tanks as bombs and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think it was an A for effort. I think they what <laughs> they said. I, I they think, think they did well what they wanted to do. Their plan. I think they were going about it the right way. I just I just think nobody stopped them and was like and was like, hey, maybe that's not the best idea. <laughs> Even the chick <laughs> painting the teeth. You're like, is this the best use of your time? I don't think the zombies care if there's teeth on the front of this. You know. <laughs> It's just for <laughs> looks, man. They want to look yeah, cool. Like, what the fuck is this? I don't know. <laughs> Andy is like asking for food. He's run out of food where he's at at the gun shop that he's running. So they get the bright ideas because the, the dog didn't get attacked by the zombies at all down in that parking no. garage. So they just load up that dog with a satchel on each side, just full of food and supplies. And they just let the dog run on over to Andy. But his little slide door thing ends up uh, staying up a little too long and the zombies end up crawling through and he ends up getting attacked. And I love this, the comedy of this scene because they're like, Oh, is he all right? And like, you see Andy just pull up the whiteboard and it's just blood smeared all over it. And he's turned already. (laughs) Yeah. Like he knew he's like, I still got to hold this up. So that makes you think like, maybe the zombies are going to the mall because they have those memories. Cause he would have had those memories of holding up the whiteboard and everything. Exactly. I, I thought yeah. that was a kind of a funny scene, though. This is where the fucking dumbass Nicole, because they send <laughs> the exact, dog, they send exactly. the dog over, and the everything's going to hell over there. Andy gets bit, and then all of a sudden you hear the truck just drive off, and this dumbass Nicole drives to the fu- the, the, the gun shop just to get the dog. Yeah. When we've already seen that the dog is not getting attacked by the zombies, the zombies the are not interested fine. in this dog whatsoever. So what are you doing? <laughs> like, no, you're she's an idiot. Just, she's putting everybody in jeopardy. Where this dog is fine. We, we could have whistled fine. it back. We could have whistled it back because he uses like a whistle to get it over there. Whistle yeah. it back. Come on yeah. back. You know? It would have came back. But she's just all in her feelings. She's so worried about this damn dog that they found that she they found like less than 24 hours ago and this kicks off like the entire end of the movie because now everything is in rush mode like we're going oh yeah now no plans yeah we're going because part of their plan out of getting once they had the the, you know vans built they were going to go pick up andy because andy runs the gun shop they were going to get tons of ammo tons of guns and then that's when they were going to go so now that andy's dead they have to go get all the the guns and ammo now so 
instead of going just from the mall to the gun shop, they I guess there's an entrance to the sewers underneath the the mall that CJ Which, takes. Why didn't Andy do that? Why didn't Andy come through the sewer the entire time? The entire yeah, right time. on the whiteboard. If you could make it to the sewer, we can let you in. Yeah, <laughs> Shit. Exactly. instead of risking everybody from the mall, have one person being risked going to the mall. <laughs> like, exactly. Come on. I know. I understand it may have would have been a hassle to like carry a bag of guns and ammo and shit, but still, maybe well, we after you him. got him rescued, maybe you could have made trips back and forth at exactly. some point. You could have figured something out. Could have um, fed him at least. There, it just seems like there's no planning when it comes to any of this stuff for them. It's like as soon as they have, they figure out something, like, yep, that's what we're doing, and this that's is how we're going to do it. Oh, like nobody's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now. Let's talk about this. Let's plan this. Let's make sure everything got our tracks covered. Nope. We, we do it this we're way. Doing, we're doing it now. So they decide to go through the sewers and they, they come up like right outside. And as soon as they get up there, the dude covers it. And just the sound of the manhole being covered alerts the zombies. They're able to get in. Ving Rames was close. He almost almost got bit as he was, you know, climbing through. Uh, somehow this dumbass is still alive nicole she's in that bathroom getting attacked by andy she's in like um, a closet i think like a like she's a, in like yeah she's like in a like, closet but ving rames is the one that has to do it and you could tell that he was a little sad he has to kill his buddy andy he's like i'm sorry i gotta do this to you pal blows his head off which is kind of a cool effect how they have it there, a lot of the, the effects in this were dope whereas like nowadays where you have like zombie movies or you know a ton of violence like this a lot of the blood and stuff is cg where it's like it's nice seeing all these practical effects and stuff like i read that a lot of like the zombies had like a like a button they're firing the guns they press the button and like it's like propelled and it shoots like the blood out their head or out like the the squibs and stuff the effects are, are fairly good in this movie and most of them you can tell are practical there might be very minimal cgi in this but like uh, like I said about the car, I'm almost 100% sure that car is CGI in the beginning. There wasn't too many like bad effects. I think a lot of the ones are like the big shit, like explosions yeah. and stuff like that, especially the one that's coming up where they have the explosion when they're trying to get out. It looks kind of rough now <laughs> compared to everything else. I would say, um, though, in general, while we're talking about effects, you are right. Like most of this is good. Like if this is the kind of movie you want to see, most of this shit's going to it's going to check your boxes this is good effects this is very yeah. good zombie effects uh one of the best right. i know you already talked about when that guy comes up and he's got like half his face missing and he comes up to the the mall door the window like, yeah where andre yeah. was looking out the window yeah that was, was really good great effect he looks awesome they have to get back to the mall so they have to rush outside get down to the manhole and that dude that stayed behind like ends up falling in the manhole oh. and like hurts his ankle where it's like at that point like they were already coming down through the manhole. Like you should have just left him at that point. I mean, he ends up getting killed anyway. It's like, but yeah. it, they just wanted that little action scene where they're fucking dragging him through the sewer. And he's, you know, that's the alien, guns blazing. the alien resurrection scene, man. That's what makes me think of alien <laughs> resurrection. <where he's> just <laughs> like, psh, psh, psh. That's what that is. He ends up getting fucking killed anyway. So it's like, you wasted a ton of ammo. <laughs> what are you doing? But CJ was the one that was fucking pulling him. This is where CJ is kind of being, the good guy as of right CJ's now he's, start, he's getting his shit together at this yeah. point yeah now steve still being an asshole he was supposed to be the one handling the door at the mall to open it back up for him as soon as they get back but he's nowhere to be found they're sitting he's there pounding on the door they're like this fucking guy steve and you have that little standoff with the zombies coming up and they're blasting them away and that's when anna has to open the door for him but it's a little late because now all the zombies are rushing the mall so their plan they have to they have to go through with the plan now as opposed yeah, to right. you know wait until everything was ready or when they were ready to they end up running down into the like the little parking garage and that's where steve is waiting he's like oh what did you, well, well, i was waiting for you guys what's going yeah. on and, I'm here. and even cj's like i'll fucking handle you later asshole <laughs> like, and he doesn't it. get to handle him i think cj no he doesn't good. CJ but got. Anna does because he's like, listen, if I if I ever turn to one of those things, I want you to put a bullet in my head. And she's like, don't worry, I'll make I'll make sure to. And then <laughs> um, she's the one that does it. He's eventually. the one that gets to do it. Yeah, <laughs> everything goes to shit here. They actually have to escape the mall. They get out in those shuttles, but they're just overrun with just hordes of zombies. You have them using the chainsaws, which it's... pretty gnarly is pretty cool effects. Just using the chainsaws, cutting their legs off and everything like the the propane 
tanks and throw them out and this rehab the effect doesn't look good as far as like the explosion it doesn't look good it's kind of a cool shot where like it's top down looking at all the zombies and everybody gets blown up and it clears it out for them so they keep going it clears them out for them so they start racing and it's like i understand you don't want to get overtaken by zombies but like you are flying around in these, these small shuttles that aren't stable you're gonna they're easily you're gonna easily flip them as you come to find out but these people are just being dumb because they're still running the chainsaws as they're racing around and they hit like one bump going around the turn and that old dude ends up like cutting straight through that one girl's torso yeah <laughs> like, what are you doing and it was one zombie too because they're like one zombie's hanging on he's like let me get the fucking chainsaw going for him like just shoot him they end up crashing the the one shuttle steve tries to get out and saves try to save his own life he doesn't give a fuck about anybody else Yeah, because vic's definitely alive at this point and steve yeah he sees but like, as no. soon as he gets out he's like looking around and you see the blood drip on him he's like what the fuck and then the zombie jumps down on top of him you don't see him get bit i like as much of an asshole that he is i wanted to see him get killed yeah uh but you don't get to see it you eventually get to see him though because he's already turned because he, he tries to he go was, after this guy was instantaneous <laughs> Because yeah. most aren't. This guy was. <laughs> this guy was when when you need it to be. Yeah. But Anna, she said earlier, she's the one that gets to kill him. She puts a bullet in his head. Yeah, because the other show turns back around. It comes back. Yeah, it turns back other. around to go get him because they notice they weren't following him anymore. Uh, they're able to get a lot of the survivors. Anna ends up risking her ass to go back to get the keys. She ends up getting yeah. the keys off of Steve. But they end up getting on the shuttle just in the nick of time. They end up driving, for some reason, straight into the dock. They crash this fucking shuttle straight into the dock like you kind of fucked yourself in that situation i feel like, <laughs> like if you would have no stopped, turning back you would have been able to get everybody off and <laughs> but because you crashed it the way you did you weren't able to get open the actual like sliding doors you could only get out the back so cj had to stick around and i always wonder like how the fuck how how do they know what boat to go to there were so many boats yeah how do they know exactly what boats steve's was was Maybe it like it named named, steve's boat? It, it had the name on the key tag i have no idea he was a dickhead the most of the movie but cj ends up risking his life to save a lot of the other ones that let them get away because they have that big ass propane yeah, tank in the middle of the bus like i get it, it was huge it, comes into, it was way bigger than everything gonna, else it, not gonna throw it off the fucking car you know so what was the plan with it well, you know? yeah because that seems pretty damn dangerous like yeah, if you somehow crash or someone shoots a stray bullet off you're all done you're cooked yeah. he like shoots the flare to get to go and everything and then he ends up blowing the tank and himself up and just kills most of the zombies that are there it lets everybody else get away yeah, nobody's except, coming at this point because we have yeah. a very somber scene now <laughs> All yeah. the other zombies are like, oh, I ain't going near that. Explosion. You had you had that you had to kill all the zombies that were chasing them to give them a little time for this little, little dramatic scene that's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, because as they're all getting on the boat, Michael decides to stay behind because he was bit. I, I forget what he says he was bit. I think he, he said whenever they were coming back from the mall or something yeah, like yeah. that. He said uh, from the gun shop. Yeah, yeah but he ends up getting bit, and he knows that you know his time's up. He's not going to be able to go with him. He's going to end up turning. So he decides to stay behind and what the f he's like, I'll just sit here and watch the sunrise for a while. It would have worked better if we would have had more character development to know some of these characters. Yeah, so like, oh, that sucks. He gets left behind. But at that point, I was like, I don't I don't care about this dude. Like, get get the boat going. Get out of here. They, they let Michael there and they end up sailing off. Movie's over, right? You cut the credits and the credits are just interspliced a little a little too much. Like, I much. feel you could have let some of these things play out a little longer because it's just like cutting in and out with the, like, you know, yeah. the, the it's VHS like two names, tape. cut, two names, cut, two names, yeah. cut. And like all the fuzzy, like static and stuff. Uh, but you actually, it's Steve's camcorder that he had on his boat, you know, filming him and these girls that he had on there. You get to see a little bit of those scenes before it actually cuts to the survivors and everything on the boat. They end up finding the cooler that has a zombie's head in it still. <laughs> it's still alive. Yeah. How it got there on that boat. I don't know. Yeah. They end up getting to the island. And as soon as they get off the boat on the island, you see zombies. all the zombies start coming out and rushing them and everything. The camcorder drops. You have a zombie drop in front of it. Very like, I know you haven't seen Blair Witch, but very Blair Witch of an ending with the, the first person POV camera dropping and, and it cuts the credits. So it's like, we don't really know what happened. Like, was all this for not? Did everybody end up getting killed on this island? Uh, we don't have a direct follow up. There was no like direct sequel to this, which would have been I was thinking the whole time, like it would have been kind of cool to like pick right up where they left off. Like you have Anna and Bing Rames. Like you maybe could have got away with like two of the survivors from do that any trip. of them though? Like do any of <clears throat> of the dead movies are are direct sequels? 
I don't like, believe I feel so. like they're always standalone. I mean, I could be so. wrong. If anybody knows for sure, let, let us know in the comments. But I don't believe mm-hmm. any of them like directly connect, you know, one into another like that. Because I'm with um, you. I feel like this is um, <clears throat> this is the one that needed to do it, you know? Yeah. Like, so, I mean, I understand you want to be bleak. Like, I understand there's a lot of zombie movies. Not um, There's not really many survivors that happen by the end of these zombie movies. So I understand you want to be bleak. But at the same time, like... This ended up turning out to be a pretty big success for them. I'm I'm pretty sure. So it's like it would it was interesting that they didn't go forward with like a sequel of some sorts. Um, yeah. Maybe they just didn't want to like, for the lack of a better term, like they didn't want to tarnish like the the Dawn of the Dead, like George Romero's brand by making a sequel to the Dawn of the Dead. I mean, yeah. you could have named it something else. You didn't have to name it like Dawn of the Dead Two or Part Two. <laughs> but I don't know. I think it would have been interesting if you would have continued with like Anna and Ving Rhames, but I understand them wanting to go with a bleak ending where it's like, yeah, no matter how far you, you think you can go or try to outlive these zombies or you're pretty much going to end up being food at the end of the day. You're going to end up getting killed in some form or another. I don't know. I, I was kind of hoping for a happy ending. I think, I think we could have took a happy ending there, but I get it. I get it. Yeah. I mean, you could easily could have cut to just credits there while they were sailing off. And it's like, what, who knows what happens after that? But then you purposely go to the Island to have them, most likely be killed in the after credits that not even after up a sequel credits. though i mean he was the new director you know maybe he's like maybe my foot in the door you know like maybe, maybe it's a little there. late now yeah. unless you do like one of those you know how they are now requels where you're bringing back like the original stars of these movies yeah. you cut 20 years later you know, it's 20 years 20 years later have ving rames and the the chick that plays on Anna the come back still somewhere it's still in his all. cop uniform <laughs> <laughs> Or in a completely island get up with like the 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 skirt and everything. It's like her and him just like Hawaiian yeah. shirt <laughs> with his aviators on and shit. And they still have that fucking the kid and Nicole with them and the dog. <laughs> the Somehow dog, the dog's still around dog. twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the dog's name was, you'd have to call him like the fourth. Like blah 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 the fourth. <laughs> but yeah, that is Dawn of the Dead from 2004, directed by Zack Snyder. Uh, 20th anniversary. It's crazy to think this movie's 20 years old. Um, I do remember I mean, this movie coming out. We're getting we're getting to that point now, right? We're just getting old. Where all these yeah. movies we remember watching, you know, growing up, you know, it's 20 years old. It's it's crazy to think about, but I think it still it, it holds up great. I mean, there's some of the CGI effects that that are that are definitely dated but i feel like as a whole i think that it's it's shot great a lot of cool cinematography i could have did a little less with like the the quick cuts and everything but i mean that was that was the style at the time (laughs) so i mean i i think the practical effects look amazing as far as zombie movies go i think this is definitely one of the better ones that are out there it's one of the more rewatchable ones it's not like super cheesy by any means um but it also i don't think it takes itself too seriously either yeah i mean it's um, uh, I started this review very saying I'm not a big zombie movie fan. Um, like uh, obviously there's some that I like, but this is this is a good one. I mean, the influence this has on Zack Snyder's career on zombie films, like uh, it's memorable. I remember the mall scenes. I mm-hmm. remember all that stuff, and I've never seen the original Dawn of the Dead. Um, I remember the baby. Like I think everybody kind of remembers that stuff. So yeah. I, I think it's worth a watch. I know you do the miss it, buy it or rent it. This is a rent it for me personally. I don't think I would buy it. Um, it's not impactful enough. There's not really new ideas. Um, I think it's a well done movie, but like nothing that I'm like, you need to see this. This is a genre defining zombie zombie movie, which is already an uphill battle for me. So that's that's my opinion of it. That's that's fair enough. That I completely agree with you there. Out of like a buy it, rent it, miss it, I would probably say rent it. Um, if you're gonna if you're gonna add one to your collection, make sure to go out the buy the original Dawn of the Dead from 1978. Yeah. That's one I would definitely for sure buy. Um, that one's still a classic. I, I don't think this movie is bad by any means. I think it's very yeah. solid as zombie movies go. Um, but like you mentioned, I mean, at that at this point, even though this movie's 20 years old, at that point when this was originally made, you still had you had zombie movies for what 30 years 30 something yeah. years at that point 40 years at that point it, it a lot of the stuff in here wasn't stuff it was stuff that we've seen before and all these other movies that george romero's done or any of these other movies uh, people that directed zombie movies made so i mean it, it didn't wasn't like you know groundbreaking or barrier breaking by any means it was just a very solid movie that was shot pretty decent the film photography was great the mu- music was pretty good throughout the whole thing even though like the score 
had some similarities to Resident Evil, like we mentioned a couple years that happened a couple oh, well, years previous. The Resident Evil score is good. Yeah, it was. But I think as for like a, a first movie in someone's filmography, I think it was very solid for Zack Snyder, though. It definitely you sure. know, yeah, yeah. made him for the running to take up, like have undertake some of these other movies like you know 300 and Watchmen and, and all that. I mean, as far as his career goes, that's entirely up to other people's interpretation about how you feel about his his oh, like movie that. career but i think it was very solid what he's done he's had some missteps here and there but i think this was a great jumping it. off point and i would actually wouldn't mind seeing zach slater like not not just return to zombie movies but return to more of like a practical effects type movie instead of relying on just cg and huge budgets like this it would be cool to see him go back to a more practical type movie like this well, we should watch the one on Netflix. I've never seen it. Um, I've Army also never seen it. I've never seen Army of the Dead. I think it's two-parter, right? I think there's two of them. No, uh, I think he's making another one, but he has yeah. that, like, Rebel one. That, yeah, the like, space one. was supposed to be a Star Wars movie and stuff that yeah. apparently is not very good. So um, I heard the, yeah. the one on Netflix was fairly good, so maybe we should give that a watch, see how he does. I, I heard his... mixed things on it. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'd definitely be down to check that out. I'd definitely be down to do, like, the original... Uh, you know, uh, Night of the Living Dead and Dawn I'll of the Dead as well. When I watch a movie and I think of like things that are like that change the movie scene, you know, like if we would do Resident Evil, my opinion of Resident Evil is much higher. Now, I think this movie had a much higher hill to climb, and I don't think it's any better or worse than Resident Evil. It's just like it's in the context of the film. So I think if you took this film out of the context, I'd maybe like it a little more. Um, yeah. But again, like it's it's just the hill that has to climb for me to be like, a, hey, you've got to buy this movie. You know, if this was mm -hmm. it, if this was the first zombie movie to ever come around, you know, if it was Night of Living Dead and then this, I'd be like, yeah, absolutely. This is awesome. Yeah. But there was so much like it was it. already based off of Dawn of the yeah. Dead, which follows some of the same story beats. And that's what I liked about this as well. Um, even though I don't remember a, a ton of the original, uh, this definitely goes its own route and does a lot of other different things and especially yeah. towards the end as far as like the escape and everything that none of that was in the original um and that's what that i like too. about this it's not a remake that's slow that like does everything that the original does it actually has its own identity it, it does a lot of the only thing it really has in common is that it's set in the mall and there's psycho. zombies and stuff yeah. <laughs> yeah looking at you psycho the, yeah, if the you're gonna do a remake, remake if you're gonna do a remake make it different <laughs> make it a little different <laughs> yeah. Like I understand having some similarities or yeah. some like of the point like plot points, but like you have to have your own identity, do some different things to to differentiate it from the original. And I think this one does that fairly well. But like you mentioned, it's it's not anything we haven't seen before as far as zombies go. Again, there's video games based off of this movie or the original, yeah. whatever it is. Like there's so much. I think a lot of this is such like a zombie trope at this point. That maybe mm -hmm. if we were doing this review back in 2004 when this movie came out, I'd be like, hey, like this was great, you know, but like just today as we sit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a solid movie. I would say rent it. Um, yeah. I, I wouldn't say miss it, though. It's a solid film. So I think it's almost to buy it. My argument is it's yeah. almost to buy it. I think it's closer to the buy it than it is to admit it on the to miss it, miss yeah. it on the renter scale. Um, yeah, yeah. I like it. And again, I don't usually like zombie movies and I, I do enjoy this <laughs> film. Yeah. Yeah. They're very hit or miss for me just because of how like some cheesy, how cheesy they are at certain points, how badly made a lot of them are. You got to um, be a standard. There, you got to be a lot of good Shaun ones out there though. You got to be the Shaun of the dead type of movie for me to be like, yeah, this is a great zombie film, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. So, but yeah, that is the review for this week of Dawn of the Dead for its 20th anniversary. As far as what's coming here through our Halloween Spooktacular Horror Month, we're, I'm going to be doing the review for the new Salem's Lot that's coming out on HBO Max. Awesome. Terrifier 3 drops on October 11th in theaters. I'm going to be going to check that out to have a review on the channel. Uh, we do have some other stuff planned for the back half of the month. I'm not ready to announce that as of right now because it's not set in stone. And we just want to make sure all that comes out to comes to fruition before I announce anything. But those other two movies, Salem's Lot and uh, Terrifier fire three i'm definitely going to be reviewing on the channel uh so be on the lookout for those uh any final thoughts on dawn of the dead here alex no man i'm excited for the sam's lot review i'll be watching that also that thursday because i'm very excited hey, for you're it more than welcome to, to hop on and part of the review with me man all want. right let me know let's plan that out um but i'm very excited for that uh it's a good movie uh, i've never seen the original so i'll be excited to see the 
the remake of it. I've never seen it. Okay, it'll so be much. very similar to, to this review, <laughs> kind of. This review. But yeah, as always, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Go check us out on Twitter and Instagram at Cinema Trip Reviews. Also, drop in and leave us a good review wherever you get your podcast. Leave us a five star review because that helps get the channel out there to more viewers, uh, get the audience growing a little bit. Also, check out our store. The link's right here below. Check in a nice Cinema Trip Reviews t shirt like Alex is wearing. Uh, I was wearing a Cinema Trip uh, Retro Reviews hat last week. A lot of lot of, lots of goodies in there. A little bit of everything for everybody there. So make sure to check that out. Make sure to let us know what you thought about the movie in the comments below. What you liked about it. What you didn't like about it. And also what movies you'd like to see us cover on the channel in the future. And until next week, we'll see everybody later. <laughs>